Welcome to the ITU studio at the Plenipotentiary Conference here in Bucharest, Romania, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Senator Karen Grogan, who is chair of the Australia Environment and Communications Senate Standing Committee. Senator, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I would like to start off by asking you, what has Australia implemented to address the special needs of least developed countries, small island developing states, and landlocked least developed countries in Asia and the Pacific when it comes to using information and communication technologies? Uh, obviously, uh, we are part of that community, and it's a very community that's very important to us. We are um, one of the top contributors to the ITU, uh, and we also provide a significant voluntary contribution each year. That contribution is focused around a lot of that work that we are focused on in the Pacific. Um, we have a range of uh, strategies and um, projects that we're rolling out in collaboration with those uh, Pacific countries. Um, we have some uh, projects that are working on the uh, Pacific Islands and the, uh, the small village uh, projects. And they're working alongside those communities to provide access, affordable access, to technology, but that enables it to enables them to actually engage in um, various uh, structures within their country. So the IT is an enabler, and the projects are, are really then enabling them to connect to their country services, engage in that more meaningful and sustainable ICT future, basically. Now. In terms of sustainable infrastructure, what's Australia doing to, to foster sustainable infrastructure and enhance digital connectivity, particularly following the impact of uh, COVID-19? Mm. Well, we're heavily involved in the Connect to Recover um, strategies. So utilising um, better access, affordability and safety to help those communities connect after uh, what we've seen is a, a, a serious uh, impact on people's lives and how they can connect and how they engage. So things like education, health service, etc. So having better connections, having safer connections, and making sure that it is affordable, and connecting the least access, uh, the least connected people, which is one of the core tenets of the ITU. And so that's something we're very proud of our work there, and very keen to continue engaging. I don't know move the topic on to gender equality. When we talk about gender equality, the term glass ceiling often comes mm. up. Have you ever experienced the glass ceiling? And if so, how did you break it? I'd have to say I've experienced that glass ceiling my whole life. Um, the glass ceiling term implies there's a, a particular point where you break through and it's gone. My experience has been that it is an ongoing challenge. Um, and I think that is predominantly the experience of all women. Um, every time you step into a new environment that is significantly populated by men, um, there is that challenge to overcome again. And I frequently find myself in a room where I'm the only female. And I think when it comes to conferences uh, like this, so the I ITU plenipotentiary, there is a lot of male-dominated environments within that. And so it's very hard for women uh, young women particularly without much experience to come in and feel comfortable in that environment. So I think it's really important. But for me personally, back to your question, um, I think it's just an ongoing situation where you're constantly walking into an environment where you need to have your voice heard, you wish to be part of that decision making, so you take a deep breath and you keep going. I'm deeply grateful to all of the women who've gone before me and carved that path that I can follow and intend very strongly to do the same for the women coming up behind me. Great, and let's talk a little bit about that. I know that Australia is definitely supporting the empowerment of women delegates here at PP22. Mm. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. Mm. We're very, very proud of the work that's going on around boosting the attendance and participation of women. Um, Australia is a very deep and strong supporter of female representation and female participation. So we were involved in the project to bring 100 uh, women from 51 different countries together to go through a program which included um, breaking down some of those barriers, getting them to understand the circumstances that they would be walking into here, um, doing mock negotiations, uh, presentations, etc. 
In part, it was about learning and education, and in part, it was about networking and confidence building. Because in one environment, you can learn so much, but when you then step into a male-dominated environment and you're a young woman with limited experience of that, it can be quite daunting. So helping them build their confidence, build their skills, and then letting them loose on the ITU to show how powerful and how meaningful and how important that voice is. But one of the critical points here is it's, it's not just a numbers game of how many people come in the door, of what percentage of the delegates are women. It's about their participation and their voice being heard and having them at that decision-making point. So I think for the ITU, this is a great step, but there is a lot more to do for that um, deeper, more meaningful engagement and to get more women at all layers of the ITU. Well, it's been a pleasure hearing your voice here in the ITU studio. Thank you very much for taking the time Thank to join us. Thank you so us. much. Out of your busy schedule, I'm sure. And uh, hopefully we'll get to catch up with you again very soon. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you.